So I'm back at it, brewing more batches of Saison. This time, I swapped out the rye for spelt and a little bit of Munich for some character. I brewed one batch with my go-to yeast strain, WLP565, it's the DuPont strain. And then I brewed a second batch using the same recipe, but this time I used Lalaman Farmhouse Dry Yeast. Well, let's get brewing. Well, welcome. This is Brent from Cascades Homebrew. So I've brewed several Saisons over the last couple of years. I have several videos on my channel, either talking about brew days with Saisons, trying some Saison yeast, talking about Saisons recipe. So it really is a great style, something I really enjoy having around. They're easy to brew, they're inexpensive, and they have a ton of flavor. So I've really enjoyed several of the Saison batches that I've brewed. I'm still making tweaks on the recipe, playing out with the different ingredients. I also want to try out more yeast, especially dry yeast. So I'd seen several references for people using spelt in a Saison. I'd never tried spelt before, so I thought I'd give it a try. Spelt is very closely related to wheat. Exactly how much difference there is between spelt and wheat? Well, I'm not quite sure about that. I like the farmhouse idea of a Saison. The idea that a farmer would use whatever grains he happened to have on hand. Spelt, it just kind of sounds a little bit more kind of unusual, maybe a little bit more of a farmhouse than just using wheat. So I brewed a batch of Saison back in 2021. I wasn't sure if I was going to put out another video just about brewing a Saison on the channel. But then shortly after my brew day, I noticed that my local shop had the Lalamon Farmhouse yeast in stock. So I haven't used that yeast, it's pretty new, and I've been on the lookout for a dry yeast for a Saison that'll give me that character that I like in some of the liquid yeast. So Lalamon Farmhouse is what's called a non-diastatic yeast. Most Saison yeasts are diastatic. Diastatic yeast means it has enzymes in it that will break down starches into fermentable sugars. That's part of the reason why you get such low attenuation, such dry beers from a lot of Saison yeast. But there's also some potential risks with diastatic yeast. One, you got to make sure fermentation is complete, otherwise they may continue to break down starches and lead to overcarbonation. Another issue is potential contamination if you have a holdover from a diastatic yeast into a future batch. In best case, you just get an extra attenuation. In worst case, that diastatic yeast leads to overcarbonation, especially if you're bottle conditioning, it may lead to bottle bombs. So I've brewed with several Saison yeasts that are diastatic. I haven't noticed any issues, but it's definitely something that some home brewers worry about. And on the commercial scale, there's been instances where diastatic yeast have led to problems, especially with packaged beers that get shipped out, and then they continue to ferment and build up carbonation. There's one or two other non-diastatic yeasts that I've heard of. I've not tried them. I think a lot of them are more available at the commercial level. So when Lalamon introduced Farmhouse as a non-diastatic Saison yeast, I was kind of interested in giving it a try. I'm on the lookout for a dry yeast that'll give me the complexity of WLP565, the DuPont strain. So I picked up a pack of the Lalamon Farmhouse yeast from my local shop, and then in December 2021, I went ahead and brewed another batch. This time, I did the same recipe, but this time, I used the farmhouse yeast. So this is not a strict split batch, different yeast like I do sometimes. These are two different batches that were brewed a little over a month apart. Well, let's take a look at the recipe, the brew day, the fermentation, and then I'll come back and I'll open a bottle of each and I'll try them side by side. See which one wins. Do you think the Lalamon Farmhouse can compete against the DuPont strain? So I'm going to run through the brew day pretty quick. If you're interested in more details of my small batch stovetop brew in the bag process, be sure to check out some of my other videos. With my oh so creative naming, I'm calling this one the Farmhouse Saison. It's not farmhouse as in funky or in brett, just because I used the Lalamon Farmhouse yeast. I brewed this one on December 10th Bottled it just over two weeks later, on December 27th. The evaluation was almost three months later, just to give a little time to age. This was a 2.6 gallon or 10 liter batch. The bitterness came out at 25 IBUs and the calculated color was 4.3 SRM. My recipe calculated around a 70% overall efficiency. That would give me an original gravity of 1055, final gravity of 1011, and an ABV of 5.9. Note that the yeast didn't exist in Beersmith, so I added some estimates. It actually came in pretty close to the attenuation that I estimated. I mentioned earlier that this recipe used spelt. This was the first time I used spelt. I don't know, malted spelt? Looks a lot like malted wheat. Smaller kernels than you would expect with your typical barley. Here's my water profile numbers on the screen. Saisons can be brewed with a wide variety of water, so I'm not sure it's that critical if you're not into adjusting your water. 
I think my motivation here was to add a little sulfate to boost the dryness, help boost up the calcium levels, and then I added some chloride, I think just to bring the ratio more in line. I'm not sure if the chloride was need. I should probably tone back the amount of sulfate that I'm adding and not add chloride, but whatever, it made a pretty good beer. So starting with my base tap water, I need to add some phosphoric acid to try to hit my target pH of around 5.4. I need four grams of gypsum to add the calcium and sulfate. I add 1.5 grams of calcium chloride then I always add half of a Camden tablet just to remove the chlorine and chloramine that's in my tap water. The grain bill was about 73% German Pilsner, about 18% of a malted spelt, and then about 9% of Munich 1, just to add a little bit of color and some complexity to the grain bill. So I went with my standard 60 minute mash for this one. My target was 149 degrees Fahrenheit, around 65 degrees Celsius. So I needed about 3.9 gallons at 155 degrees Fahrenheit, or about 14.8 liters at 68 degrees Celsius to get my target mash temperature. I boiled the batch for 60 minutes. After the 60 minute mash is complete, it's time to remove the grain bag and let it drain. I give it a little while to let it drain and then give it a squeeze to try to extract as much of the sugars out of the grain bill as I can. The hops used were very similar to other saisons that I brewed and also other Belgian beers that I brewed. So at 60 minutes, I had a third of an ounce or nine grams of Northern Brewer for a little bit of bitterness. And then at 10 minutes, I added a three quarter ounce or 21 grams of Herzberger hops just for a little hop flavor. Also at the 10 minute mark, I added one gram of Irish moss and 1.1 gram of yeast nutrient. I used my immersion chiller and pump to get the wort down to pitching temperatures. First using tap water, then circulating ice water. I then transferred the wort into my sanitized three gallon for monster fermenter. So I target around 2.6 gallons into the fermenter. Looks like I got just a touch over 2.5 gallons this batch. Oh, then I went ahead and pitched my one pack of Lollamon farmhouse yeast. I just direct sprinkled it on top of the wort. So I grabbed an original gravity reading of 1053 that was just two points under my target of 1055. I moved the fermenter into my chamber, which I held at 68 degrees Fahrenheit or 20 degrees Celsius. I was gone for a couple days, so I left it there for the first two days, and then I let it free rise up to 76 degrees Fahrenheit or just over 24 degrees Celsius. And it reached that temperature around day four. I held it there at that temperature until time to package. So it was on day 17 that I got around to bottling this batch. So looking at the fermentation on this one, when I checked on the batch on day two, there were strong signs of fermentation. By day five, you can definitely see that signs of fermentation are slowing down. I don't typically do many mid-fermentation gravity readings. It'd be kind of cool to have a tilt to be able to look onto these, but I think visually I can see that I'm pretty close to final gravity it just needs a little bit of time to finish up and to clarify. So on day 17, it was time to bottle. So packaging for me is usually a combination of one, is the beer ready to be packaged? And then two, does it fit into my schedule? I usually figure a little bit more time in the fermenter is always a good thing. You can see the beer started to drop clear. It's quite attractive looking. So at some point, I might put out a video on different bottling techniques. I usually fill directly from the fermenter adding a measured amount of table sugar to each bottle. I use enough sugar to target three volumes of carbonation. This gives me a crisp carbonation bite without worry about gushers when I open a bottle. The initial gravity reading sample tends to clear out small amounts of yeast or trub that have settled around the spigot. I then fill up each bottle using a bottling wand. Today I'm filling a mix of bottle sizes. Each bottle gets capped after it's filled and then set aside while I fill and cap the next ones. Looking at the actual stats for the farmhouse saison batch, I measured an overall efficiency of 64%. This was a little under my target just because I was both low a little bit on volume and on original gravity. So my original gravity I measured was 10.53. I got 80% attenuation, gave me a final gravity of 10.10 and a 5.7% ABV. 
Even though I missed my original overall efficiency by several points, I still ended up with pretty much the same beer. If I look at the actual stats of the WLP 565 batch versus the Lalamon Farmhouse batch, the WLP 565 batch had a couple extra gravity points at 1055. You see a bigger difference in attenuation, the 85% versus 80%. So the WLP 565 batch got down to 1008 with a 6.2% ABV. So here they are, I got a bottle of each. The one in this hand is the one that was brewed with WLP 565, the DuPont strain. The other one was brewed with the Lalamon farmhouse yeast. So these beers have been in the bottle for three and four months. I've generally felt that with WLP 565, the beers get a little bit better after they've been in the bottle for a couple months. So I wanted to give both of these a good chance to make sure they show in their true character. So first, I'm gonna go ahead and crack open the Lalamon farmhouse yeast batch and then I'll open the WLP 565 batch. So right off the bat, I noticed the WLP 565 batch was a little higher carbonation. Could that because of the diastatic yeast converting sugars and then fermenting more in the bottle? I don't know. It could just be a side effect of that particular bottle. I think in general, I've noticed that they're a little higher carbonated. I've been trying to shoot for about three volumes to help boost them up. I find if I go above that, I tend to get a little bit more gushers coming on the bottle. So if we go for appearance, they're both a very pretty color. Very similar looking. They got a little bit of haze just from the pour. I think the initial pour was very clear on them. And then I poured a little bit more into each glass and I got a little bit of yeast in there, but that's fine. It's got a nice light golden color. So again, the malt build on this one was very simple. It was just Pilsner malt, some spelt, and then a little bit of Munich. Hopefully the Munich will add a little bit of grain complexity to the flavor. So if we go in for aroma, so I get some hop aroma on the nose from the Herzberger hops, maybe a little bit from the Northern Brewer, but I think it's mostly just the uh, the Herzberger hops. Do I get Saison character? I get a little bit of a touch. It'd be hard to pick out right on the nose that this was a Saison. On the other hand, let's check out the aroma on the WP 565 batch. Yeah, you definitely get more of that, a little bit of that kind of apple spicy um, Saison character. You also get the similar, you know, light, light grain kind of character. You get the hops. They both smell quite nice. We go in for a taste on the two. A very nice, easy drinking beer. So this is clearly not the very first one of these that I've drank since they've been in the bottle for several months. I always felt that maybe they were a little bit sweet. I think maybe both of them. We'll see if the WP 565, I think the last time I had it, you know, maybe it's a little less sweet. So versus the prior recipe, so the biggest change in the recipe was swapping out the rye and adding in the spelt. So overall, I'd say it's a really nice beer. It's got some, just a touch of kind of the, some, some grain character to it. That I think from you know, the Pilsner sweetness, a little bit of that Munich malt, you get a, just, just a touch of kind of a, a light kind of bread crust kind of character that I think is really nice. The Herzberger hops, I get just a touch of some hoppiness to it. What about the Saison from the yeast character? My initial impressions are that if you drank this, I think people would say, yeah, that's a Saison. Is it a really complex Saison? I'm not quite sure it's quite there yet. Let's go ahead and take a taste of the WP 565 and see how it compares. So the WP 565 back does has that really nice kind of rocky head character to it. I'm not sure maybe some of that is from the spelt. I think the carbonation clearly helps a bit too. So the aroma on this one definitely has more of that. I'm not sure, I guess I would call it pepper, a little bit of kind of a spicy. I don't, I don't like some Saisons that are really apple-y. And I don't get that from the WP 565. So as far as the flavor, again, a lot of the same base recipe. So I get just that little kind of touch of that bread crust kind of uh, grain complexity. There's um, a little bit, I think a little bit more sweetness from the smelt than I get from the rye version. So I think I might want to tone down the sweetness a little bit, maybe use some sugar just to dry it out a little bit. The WP 565 definitely has more of that Saison kind of complex character that I really like in a Saison. <clears throat> it's just a really nice kind of character that sort of 
changes as it sits on your tongue for a minute and after you swallow you still get that feeling if we go side by side with the uh, the farmhouse they're not crazy different in character and flavor so i think there's just kind of that lingering kind of complexity of the 565 that i do not get in the farmhouse so what are my overall thoughts on the farmhouse yeast the lolomon farmhouse dry yeast well for a dry yeast i think it's making a pretty good saison one, so it'd be interesting to do a head to head against this in Belle Saison. I thought the Belle Saison was just a little bit kind of plain when I did that last one. So in a head to head, it'd be kind of interesting to see between Belle and Farmhouse Saison, which one made the best Saison? What one had that character that I really look for? What one the complexity that I like? But as far as an easy to use Saison, dry yeast, I thought they'd make it a really nice beer. So I do feel like this one has a little bit more sweetness than I want in a Saison. So part of that is me just knowing the attenuation, thinking it might be sweet, but I do think it is a little bit more sweet than I would like. So I mentioned before, one way to combat that is to mix in a little bit of sugar in the grain bell, remove some of the Pilsner, add some sugar, that'll help dry it out. I didn't do that before in my Saison recipe because I thought they felt like they were nice and dry. So for this particular yeast, you may want to tweak the recipe just to account for the attenuation factor of the yeast. The other thing that'd be interesting with the yeast would be try it at different temperatures. Kind of did this one about in the middle of the range, kind of those seven, mid 70 degrees. So you could potentially push it up maybe over 80 degrees Fahrenheit. You could also try down the lower temperature range. Sometimes different yeast will push out different characters in a different temperature range, depending on what you like. That would be something interesting to try. Just some different fermentation temperatures. See what kind of character I could get out of this yeast. So I picked up another pack of Farmhouse. I liked it enough that I think I'm going to give it another try. Fermentus, I know, makes a couple Saison yeast that I haven't tried. So those are on my list. But if you like any of the ideas in this video, say me making Belgian beers, making more Saisons, me doing small batch brew in the bag, me trying out different yeasts, trying variables, experimental stuff. Well, make sure you subscribe to the channel. That way you'll get notified of future content like this. And also, make sure you check out the videos that I already have on my channel. And I hope the information I talked about today will help you build some great beer. Cheers!